Hello everyone, this is Marita, one who catches lightning with the Path of Ish podcast, Walking with Our Shadow, where we share ancient indigenous teachings of remembrance, all so we can walk and learn how to walk a path of radical self-love. Hello everyone, it is with great pleasure and honor and excitement that we get to sit today in circleness, allowing all of our parts together to stay curious, to sit, to listen, to weave, to learn, to heal, to continue in a good way, walking step by step one day at a time, one moment at a time, on this path, this lesson that we call life. So as we begin today, let's just take a moment. Let's just bring ourselves into this time and this place by taking our three breaths, breathing in and out through the nose, welcoming our mind into this time and place. In and out through the nose, welcoming our body into this time and place. Hmm. In and out through the nose, welcoming our essence into this time, to this place. And just allow yourself to land here, to arrive. <sighs> and take a moment to, as you are arriving, right? To bring with you everything that got you to this moment now. The journey of everything that you've picked up, that you've carried, that you've let go, that has culminated into this moment, this time, this place. The things above the surface, the things below. And just notice yourself. And as we arrive more fully in the present, bringing our past with us, our future with us, arriving now, we humbly approach the circle and ask it to hold us. And we do so by approaching the directions. Whatever tradition you come from, whatever guardians you come from, wherever the elements or the colors you come from, there is no one way the circle, as it goes round and round, accepts all. It can hold all. Nothing is either better or greater. It all works itself out in the circle. So we approach the circle and the elements and the guardians of the east, the south, the west, and the north. To open up this circle to hold us, to nurture us with their presence, to give us direction in this conversation. And as the circle is starting to open up, we go to the east again, asking to enter. And once we enter and we settle in, if you need another three breaths, that's great. And today we're going to be talking about a beautiful friend that I keep rediscovering more and more as I live my life, as I observe, as I search, as I ask, as I get to know them more. And I'm sitting with them here. They're outside my window, gloriously their leaves moving in the wind. And so today I'm welcoming the aspen tree. Thank you, Aspen, for being here. One of the beautiful things about aspens is that one tree, one representation of one tree is just a small part of a larger organism. 
It's actually a stand of aspen or a group of them that is considered a singular organism. And the life force that connects them is this extensive root system that's underground. What is so intelligent about this and so beautiful and amazing is that before you see that aspen spring out of the ground, that root system could lie dormant for years and years and years until the conditions are just right, including what aspens really need, sufficient sunlight. What an amazing way of observation to learn how and when to grow. An aspen won't shoot up a single tree as part of its extension of an organism until there's enough sunlight. It has that intelligence. It doesn't rush to grow. It waits to become. Now within the stand, each tree, right? Each tree is a genetic replica. So it's a clone Hence, many people call stands of aspens clones. Now, aspens have been around for a long, long time. They have a long memory of an adaptation, right? And go back to that beginning imagery of it will only grow a tree when it is the perfect time. And there are some aspens, the oldest known aspen clone has lived more than 80 thousand years older than the massive sequoias and it's living uh, in Utah in the Fish Lake National Forest. It is considered this clone one of the oldest living organisms and it weighs 6,600 tons and is also one of the heaviest. Now just Sit with that and let that rest for a moment. Here is an organism that has been living for 80,000 years, growing bit by bit, first underground, and then when the time is right for it to reach the sunlight, it does so. And it's been doing this for 80 thousand years. Now we know that trees have longer memories than humans. They have a tendency of living longer than humans. But this collective memory of this organism of how to grow, how to thrive in conditions that will allow it to be, it has been learning, growing, changing, evolving, for 80,000 years when conditions are ripe. This intelligence is an intelligence that we can sit with and start asking questions of, wow, if you in your intelligence, in the natural way that you have learned to grow, my dear Aspen friend, and have grown in a way where you are building your roots, really building your roots. Who am I? Where am I? How do I feed myself? How do I create a link that connects me to Mother Earth, that connects me to who I am, that connects me to the core of who I am? And then to have then the intelligence to know When the time is right, the environment, the people, the landscape is right, to then showcase and weave that part of myself into existence. The reason we are sitting with Aspen today is to remind us that even Aspen has a long memory, longer than humans. But it does not keep its trauma and drama 
from allowing it to continue to adapt and to grow. It sits with its beingness. It sits with the trauma that is happening to this planet, to the land, to the microclimates. It sits with it and it grows appropriately in a way that can grow through it, through the trauma, through the drama. And so Aspen is a beautiful tree to sit with and build sacred relationship by being able to go to it in its intelligence, in its medicine of how do I grow? How do I choose to grow? How can I understand that sometimes growth is not happening above ground that I can see my progress, but it it is a deep, consistent growth happening in the darkness of the earth. Aspens can thrive in a variety of environments. The number one thing it cannot, not have, cannot, that needs for it to exist is abundant sunshine. But other than that, it can exist in moist soil or survive in near desert conditions. It's one thing that it holds true to is its need to stand in the sun. When was the last time that you stood in the sun? in the truth, in your brilliance, in the brilliance and the majesty of this world, in the sun, and allowed it to shine upon you and nurture you and show you that your shadow only happens when you stand in the sun. It's not something to be afraid of, but it is a natural part of you to learn how to live in coexistence as part of your organism. Aspens have a lot to teach us today. Aspens can also grow almost all the time, even in winter. Did you know that? So even though you might be in a wintry place, right, and everything is kind of shut down, This is another intelligence way, intelligent way that it grows that, you know, that white outer bark that's so beautiful and striking. There is beneath that a thin green photosynthetic layer that then allows a tree to create sugars and grow when other deciduous trees would be dormant in the winter. Now, not only then do we see aspen as a sort of ever green, just different, it knows how to thrive when other things are dormant. Its trunk, its body adapts. Remember, it needs sun when its leaves are no longer on it. Aspens are literal sunshine in this heavy dimension of time and space. And we love them when they turn golden and remind us of that connection to the sun, to that which rises and sets consistently marking our passage of time, of life, of opportunity, of being present and becoming our medicine. Now the tree lives in coexistence during those really harsh winters that layer that we were talking about, that thin green layer, is sugary and they provide nutrients for deer and elk. So you'll see them eating 
that. And throughout the year, Aspen, young Aspen, provide food for a variety of animals. Porcupine, grouse, rodents, black bears, moose, beavers. And so it lives in relationship with the world above it, the sun, on this plane, in relationship to its family, its clone, its organism, the organisms around it that it feeds, not just physically, but emotionally with their beauty, and then down below in its rootedness of being so at home in the dark. Remember, it needs the light, but it is so at home in the dark soil, in that void, what we call that void, that darkness of creation, right? That it will only come to light when it can get the light. It does not force itself to quote-unquote shine. Hmm. I have sat with Aspen on and off for my whole life. My first memory of collecting, I guess you would say, conversation, story, and information in a very conscious and studious way was probably when I was in second or third grade. And my mother would take me to the arbors to learn about trees. Now, I did have homework that I had to put together a leaf book, right, to learn about trees. But she consistently did it every year, and we would go several times to collect leaves. And not just to collect them, but to spend time together, to look at the beauty, to talk about change. Now, my mother does not know her left or her right from each other. Usually can get lost very easily. But when it comes to being in nature and being in trees and with the plant kingdom and the tree kingdom, that woman is never lost. I'm getting a little emotional here. She speaks tree. She speaks flower. She speaks grass. She understands them more than I would say other kingdoms on this planet. And to see someone who naturally rejoices in the brilliance of this connection and to be able to be in their magic and in their presence of collective beauty, the beauty of them shining to the tree, the tree shining back, reflecting It's like to be surrounded by endless possibility. I say that because Aspen, as if we come in a good way, not only do they teach us by who they are, but they invite us into their living organism, into their intelligence, into being a part of something greater. To be able to walk among them, to sit with them, to observe them, to learn from them, to talk to them, We can enter and to receive from them, right? Because we're asking. We can enter into a deep, sacred relationship where we can learn how to be human, a connected human 
across our lifetime in this lifetime of experience and the multitude of lifetimes we have lived before. And in doing so, we can be present in this time and call forth the lessons of our life, witness them, and see and acknowledge their intelligence. And so when we are ready to take the next step or grow the next aspen in our life, we can wait for the conditions to be perfect, knowing that we are consistently weaving underground. Hmm. Knowing that while we might not see the fruit of our life, there is growth in the collected weaving of the unknown. And so today, we are going to do a meditation with Aspen. And first of all, thank you, Aspen, for being here. And as we take our three breaths, I want you to allow yourself to be shown, as we ask Aspen, how does it weave its, quote-unquote, three breaths together, its intelligence, the intelligence of above, the intelligence on this plane, and the intelligence below. It's intelligence of its mind. It's intelligence of its body. And it's intelligence of its essence. So take your three breaths and just allow that imagery to come through at the pace that it wants when the time is right, says Aspen. And if this is all you do in this meditation, this is enough. Just these three breaths, in and out through the nose, weaving with Aspen, being reflected back to you, the parts of your life where your breath gets stuck, where your mind is not weaving with your body and your body is not weaving with your essence, where you are struggling to connect to know how to operate together. Now we can continue this imagery and this meditation. And if you would like to bring a part or a thing in your life where you are having trouble with growth, where you are in the dying rebirth process, And you're having trouble. You're stuck, as I've been talking to many people, in the birth canal. How can Aspen today teach us how to let go of our leaves, knowing that we will always connect to the sun, we will always have resources in our body as well as below. And just allow, show this imagery to the aspen. Remember, you're not just showing it to one tree. You're showing it to the organism as a whole. So you might be able to imagine yourself standing in the middle of this aspen organism in all of its parts, all of its many parts, just like you have many parts learning how to be cohesive and learning how to live in balance as it waits for the right time to grow. So we will just be here with Aspen as we listen.
Remember to keep breathing. Hmm. And any other thing that Aspen wants to reveal to you, let it reveal to you now. If you'd like to stay here with Aspen longer, please pause this recording. And take as much time as you need to be in the presence of Aspen and receive. For those of you who are done for now, let us slowly start coming back as we give thank to Aspen. As you slowly start coming back to your body, to this time, this place, wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, take your three breaths again. Hmm. Thanking your essence for being here in this time and place. In and out through the nose. Thanking your body for being here in this time and place. In and out through the nose. Thanking your mind for being in this time and place. As we thank Aspen, as we thank the Tree Kingdom, we thank the East, the North, the west and the south and the east again and circle for holding us in this teaching as we close the circle allowing ourselves to step back and into our life and the circle of our life as we are in this death and rebirth process consistently in different areas of our life at any given time. Hmm. If you enjoyed this meditation and this platica, we hope to see you in our new class coming out, which is Rebirth Through the Elements. And yes, there will be trees. I don't know if it's going to be Aspen. We'll see who comes up. Where we will have the support of Cacao, a very specific in particular cacao we will be making for this class. And we will sit for eight weeks between mid-October and December. And we will sit with this process of how to build sacred relationship and how these sacred relationships teach us how to die and to rebirth through sunshine, through clouds, through water, through rivers, through mountains, everything that you see outside in nature, you have. And as we connect you to that intelligence of growth, it will be easier for you to learn how to die, how to let go, how to embrace the new, and grow towards your sun light. From all of my teachers and from me, Shade. Once again, it is with deepest gratitude that I bow to you for joining me on this podcast, this episode, this circle, this Platica, this meditation, this remembering. I hope that you have stayed curious. I hope to see you in the circle again next week. So make sure that you like or follow. Until then, may you be blessed with abundance of peace and radical self love. 